everyone, my name is Kat Pulse. I'm a photographer and videographer from the United States. Today, we're going to be discussing important gear to have as a beginner portrait photographer. Now before I start this video, I just want to say, remember, you're just starting out. It's okay if you don't have the most expensive gear in the world or any of the gear that I'm recommending for you today. I mean, I've seen some pretty impressive work from people who have smartphones and that's it. So just keep that in mind and let's get started. that I highly recommend you get is a UV filter. Because if you're clumsy like me, you've probably dropped the lens before. That is one reason why it is so important to get UV filters for all of your lenses. It adds a layer of protection between your lens's glass and anything it may bump into or scratch. Because trust me, it's way more expensive to replace a lens than it is to just replace one of these UV filters. Another reason why UV filters are so important is because it literally <laughs> blocks out UV light from getting to your camera's lens. Now keep in mind, UV light really more so only affects film cameras. So if you're shooting with a DSLR or a mirrorless, you're really not gonna have this problem too much because the sensor just isn't that much affected by UV light. But if you're shooting film, most definitely get yourself a UV lens. You'll thank yourself later. So if you're shooting with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, really more so the UV filter kind of just acts as a protectant layer um, between your lens and this piece of glass. So it protects from dust, sand or any kind of scratches or any kind of things you might bump into or if, even if you drop it. Um, so just to be safe, go and pick yourself up some of these for each one of your lenses. I love that sound. <laughs> the next item is going to be a collapsible disc reflector. Collapsible disc reflectors can be used for studio photography or outdoor photography and even videography as well. Um, and you will not realize how fantastic it is to have one of these until you try it and see how it works. And I personally make sure that I bring mine to every single photo shoot that I do. As you can see, I have a white and silver collapsible disc reflector. But if I could have gone back in time to the day that I bought this one, I think I probably would have gotten the five in one disc reflector. They come with silver, gold, white, black, and translucent reflectors. Silver controls contrast, gold adds a warm tone, white produces a soft light reflection, black blocks out any unwanted light, and translucent lessens the amount of light, but not as much as white does. So you all can kind of see what I'm talking about. Here's the white side of my reflector. So as you can see, it's just very lightly bouncing off the light from up here down to here and up towards my face. Uh, and it even kind of softens my skin up a little bit too. And then, ugh, it's huge. <laughs> and then here is the silver side. Um, so as you can see, it's just adding a little bit more contrast to my face, like I said before. And same thing, the light bounces off hits my reflector and shines back up to my face. And the higher you bring it, the more it's going to affect um, the amount of light on your face. And same with the other side too, so you can see. So that's lower. And if we bring it a little higher, you can see it's just very lightly adding um, a little bit more light to my face. So it's the perfect way to control any light source and will make your life a million times easier if you're in any kind of direct sunlight or anywhere where the light is harsh. So be sure to pick yourself up one of these. Camera stands. Always a good idea to have a camera stand on you. Some photographers prefer to use a camera stand and put the camera on it, obviously, <laughs> and um, get a remote control so that, you know, their camera will be over here, but they can be free to move around. So this kind of allows them to, you know, help the model pose differently or help the model fix their hair. Um, or even if like they need to help the model that can't move, like just pull down her shirt a little bit like that, it kind of adds a little bit more freedom um, to your photo shoot. But also too, like if you're working with families sometimes, 
um, or if you're working with you know just one person in particular that may not be a model um, and who not who may not be comfortable posing in front of a camera it kind of adds more of like a personable effect because rather than having someone you know in front of a camera you can't really see their face now you're off to the side your camera's over here and you know of course the person will be looking towards the camera but still at the same time like you, they can see your face and they can see your expression and stuff so it just adds more of a personable effect um, for the person that you're photographing. I personally don't use a stand but it's all about personal preference and what's comfortable for you, what works best for you, and what works best for that situation at that given time. And also too, another reason to have a stand uh, handy with you is if you have any kind of gear that can maybe fit onto it. So um, an external light maybe that can screw onto the mount and you can stand that up on your stand. So um, I personally right now, as you can see, have these lights on the side of me, right? Um, now these are studio lights, so it really wouldn't affect, you know, uh, what I'm doing out in the real world because I need to plug these in. But if you have one that is um, just runs on battery and doesn't have any kind of cables or anything like that, you just put that on the stand, you set it off to the side, and now the person that you're photographing has a source of light coming from the front of them. And if you have a light that's coming from behind them, uh, you don't have to worry about them now being too dark because you don't have a light in front of them. A few years ago, I worked at a company that specializes in school portraits. They would train us, give us all the gear we needed, and then send us off to these schools to take pictures of kids who totally didn't want their pictures taken. Okay, maybe some of them liked getting their pictures taken, but not a lot of them. <laughs> uh, so anyways, part of the gear that they gave us uh, was a big box of disposable hair combs. Uh, bit smaller than this one, but you know, a hair comb, <laughs> and uh, also a small mirror. I recommend going onto Amazon and seeing if you can get yourself like a box of combs to just keep in your like closet or something, and then each session you have, for every person that you're going to be photographing at that session, uh, just make sure that you have a comb for each person. Keep it in your pocket, in your bag, and you know, especially like if your client has long hair and it's windy that day, their hair is totally going to get knotted up, and if you have long hair, you know what I'm talking about. And even if it's not windy, even if they have short hair, whatever, um, they're still gonna have some flyaway hairs like on the top up here, on the sides, that could probably go away if you just, you know, have your client brush their hair out a little bit. And that is gonna save you so much time when it comes time to edit. So keep that in mind. I know it's not photography gear, but still, it's something that's really important to have and I feel like that's something that a lot of people overlook um, when they do sessions. And the mirror is pretty self-explanatory too. It just gives your client a chance to check their makeup, their hair, their outfit. Um, and you also, when you're just starting out too, you're less likely to have a makeup artist there with you or someone to style your model. So providing a mirror for them and also giving them like little advice on you know what they could wear before they even get to the photo shoot, that's gonna make for a better quality photo shoot and also make your life easier when it comes time to edit. So hair combs and a little mirror. Trust me, it's life changing, just do it. You're, you're gonna be so happy you did it in the long run. For every photo shoot that you do, you should always carry a lens cleaning kit with you. Clean your lenses, please. It's always a good idea to make sure that before you start any session or any kind of video recording, that you make sure that your filter, if you have a filter on your lens, that your filter and your lens glass is both clean. I personally use, the Zeiss cleaning kit. It comes with a little air blower, and I love the sound it makes too, that's always fun. Comes with that. It comes with the cleaning spray that you need too. It comes with this, uh, this little brush, see? It comes with a little brush so you can wipe off any dust or sand that you've got on your lens or your filter. And uh, it, it does come with a microfiber cloth. Uh, I kind of lost mine, so I just replaced it with a different one and a bigger one too. Um, but it comes with that, and if you're gonna lose your, your cloth, which you're more than likely to, make sure it's a microfiber cloth that you get, because otherwise you can actually scratch your, your lens or your filter and you don't want to do that. 
And I'm actually all out of them, but it also does come with little cleaning wipes. They come in like a little package, tear it off, and uh, it's kind of like when you go to a fish food restaurant and you know, you get the lobster bib and everything, you eat your lobster, you make such a mess out of everything, or even like barbecue ribs, <laughs> um, and you make such a mess out of your hands, your face, and they give you those little cleaning wipes. It looks exactly like that. It's such a handy little kit. I mean, as you can see, it's small, it's compact, um, and it should fit into most camera bags. I mean, you really can't go wrong with having one of these. It especially comes in handy if you're photographing at the desert or the beach, anywhere where there's a lot of sand and dust. Um, and plus sometimes too, it happens, you accidentally touch your lens or your, your uh, filter and you need to clean it. So having this handy dandy little kit will definitely save the day. So obviously, you're a photographer, you're gonna need some lenses. So two lenses I'm gonna recommend is getting a prime lens and a wide angle lens. If you were doing weddings, then I definitely recommend adding on a um, telephoto zoom lens as well to this. But because we're just doing portraits right now, um, I'm just gonna recommend the prime and the wide lens. Here's why. A prime lens is set to one particular focal length. You can't zoom in, you can't zoom out, but that doesn't mean that you're limited and that doesn't mean that it's gonna hinder you getting a great photo. It's all about angles, baby. I have a Canon EF 85mm f1.8. I am obsessed with it. I use it for portraits, nature photography, photos of animals, and so much more. The photos that you're seeing on the screen now all have been taken with this lens. Some other focal lengths you can also try are 24mm, 35mm, 50mm, and 75mm. My next lens purchase is totally gonna be the Canon RF 35 millimeter f 1.8. It's always good to have a little variety in your camera bag. And as far as wide angle lenses go, I'm actually using my wide angle lens right now to film this video. <laughs> it's the Canon Zoom Lens EFS 10 to 18 millimeter 1.4. And all of these photos that you're seeing right now were all taken with this particular lens. If you can avoid using your on-camera flash, and but when I say on-camera flash, I mean if your camera in particular has a flash that pops up and you know shoots out light <laughs> uh, when you take a photo, I recommend not using that um, just because I really haven't seen a good photo with those and you can't control the direction that the light is coming from. Like it's kind of just straight on of where you're taking your photo and that's it. Having an external light source lets you be in control of where the light is coming from. Not the sun, not a street light, you are in charge of that. And what I recommend is getting yourself one of these. Uh, it's not something that's completely necessary when you're first starting out, um, but if you wanna do like photography at nighttime or you know even like sunsets or sunrises where you might need a little extra light on your model or your client, one of these, and again, a camera stand, really can help you. Having one of these also lets you control the temperature between cold and warm, and also the brightness, so how much light is being projected onto your subject's face. Another option that you can choose is one of these external flashes. It's just always good to have one of these on you, um, cause you never know too, like you like portraits now, but later on down the road, you might be doing nightlife photography, event photography, live music. So it's always good to have one of these in your camera bag. Um, and also too, like I was saying, it lights up your, your model, your subject, you know? So you're gonna need one of these or just get yourself one of those other lights that I showed you. Last but not least, Please pack up your photos, please. I cannot say that enough. Don't put yourself through that situation where you take the best photos you've ever taken and then your computer crashes on you or your SD card fails. It's always good to have some kind of backup of your work. And also too, this is the greatest way to upset your client and make them think that you're totally unreliable and have no idea what you're doing. Get yourself at least a one terabyte hard drive. I'd even recommend two of them. I personally have two of them. They're not too expensive, and you can find them on Amazon for usually under $100. I don't recommend anything under $50 because they're, mm, you know, it's a little sketchy. <laughs> but anything over 50, under 100, usually you're, you're in a pretty good range for that, and you're usually setting yourself up for a good hard drive. 
One last thing I'd like to say before we go, all of these products that I've recommended to you all today, I've actually given you some Amazon links uh, below in the description so that if you want to go ahead and maybe start slowly building up your gear collection or just go ahead and buy all of it at the same time, um, I've done the research for you on what you should get and you know what's cost efficient for you just starting out to and that's also good quality those links like i said are in the description below um, and keep in mind too they are amazon affiliate links they're my amazon affiliate links um, so if you do purchase these items i do get a commission for that as well so i just want to say thank you in advance if you do end up clicking on those links and purchasing any of those items um, it really helps me to keep my channel going and to keep providing awesome content for you all so that'll be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching my video and for supporting my channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell notification down below to be notified when I post more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next video. Bye everyone.